Oregon pastor, Jesse Lusco, opened up about the time he shared the gospel with Joker actor Joaquin Phoenix. So without further ado, let's dive into it. We Joker is really intense, but Arthur Fleck is there. He's beaten down by Gotham City. He's just, he's just beat down to nothing. He's poor. He's got mental health issues. He's just debilitated. And then you just see the this, this city beating him down, just reducing him to nothing. And then he finally snaps, and he decides he's going to get his vengeance. And he's going to take out his revenge, not just on one person. He's taking his revenge on all the billionaires. He leads an uprising in Gotham, Gotham City, and they just start taking down everyone, taking taking down anyone who stands in their way, okay? That's what Arthur Fleck does. Arthur Fleck, Joaquin Phoenix, becomes the Joker. Now, it's very difficult for humans, especially those who have been bullied and made fun of because of their quote-unquote differences compared to others. It's very difficult for us to turn the other cheek, as the Bible says, but I want to let you know and remind you that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Always remember that. So as we get into more of the details of what uh, this pastor stated about when he met Joaquin Phoenix, who played the Joker, I want you to think about the times you were made fun of and bullied and even maybe even taken advantage of. And lean on God, lean on the Holy Spirit to get through, get you through those moments. So let's finish. It's kind of surprising. The day before my dad's funeral, I met Joaquin Phoenix. And it was literally the day before my dad's funeral. My dad had just died. Uh, I had worked at this restaurant group previously. And the day before the funeral, we wanted the kids to go swimming. And I go to the coffee shop across the street and my old boss sees me and goes, Jesse, I'm so sad about your dad. By the way, do you realize that guy you were standing with waiting for the, the coffee shop to open is Joaquin Phoenix? And I go, whoa, that's crazy. That's my dad's favorite actor. I'm like, that, that was literally bar none my dad's favorite actor. So I talk to him. I say, hey, Joaquin, I you know, just wanted to say hi to you real fast. You know, my dad uh, just died. His funeral's tomorrow. You were his favorite actor. He goes, oh my gosh, did, did he die suddenly? I'm like, well, yeah, he got pancreatic cancer. He died 11 months later. He goes, oh my gosh, my dad died of cancer. My dad died of cancer 10 years ago. I can still remember the phone call. I go, man, Joaquin, like... You may think that this encounter with the pastor and Joaquin happened by happenstance, which in a worldly aspect, it did. But this was a divine appointment between him and Joaquin Phoenix. When we have the opportunity to engage with people who do not know Christ for themselves, it's our duty to tell them about the good news. Now, I'm, I'm speaking to myself as well, because oftentimes I do not do that. So let's continue. He loved you since signs, like he just knew you were going to the top, the stratosphere. He just watched your career in all the way back in the 2000s. And Joaquin's like blown away. I'd also shared with him my dad's story of coming to Christ, that my dad had experimented with tons of drugs, that he'd hitchhiked around the United States, that his mom had died of brain cancer, that his stepdad was murdered by his business partner. That's all a true story. And my dad had come to Christ and Joaquin was blown away by that story. Okay. Then I shake his hand, I leave. Hours later, we go back to the pool and we're at the pool, and uh, he's in the gym working out, but we just leave him alone. Like, we don't want to bother him. You know, just totally leaving him alone. And I'm there with my son, Lion, and all my siblings. We're just leaving him alone. My son has to go to the bathroom, so I'm like, oh, taking my son to the bathroom. Well, as I'm walking, I just hear somebody going, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. And I turn around, and Joaquin Phoenix is chasing me down. <laughs> and, and you would think I'm lying if I didn't have a photo to prove it. <laughs> That is the actual photo of me shirtless at the pool. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix chased me down. And, you know, he's, he's, he goes, hey, man, you know, actually, I want to take a photo with you. Your dad's story really touched me. My dad died of cancer. And we get talking about, man, I was thinking about more movies here in like Johnny Cash. And I was like, hey, we're all followers of Jesus. And there's a line in Johnny Cash where you're about to go play Folsom Prison. And uh, your producer goes, you listeners are good Christian folk. They don't want you singing to no murderers and rapists and thieves. And you go, 
than they know Christians. And, and Joaquin laughed so hard, and I was like, yeah, man, we just believe in Jesus. We believe in, in his grace. My dad believed in that, and I just want to play God's greatest grace over you. So anyways, we go and take that photo. Now I'm going to tell you why that was really significant. Okay, and this is where it gets heavy, connects with last week's message, is that when I was a little kid, a family friend who deceived our family, manipulated our family, betrayed our family, in a severe and brutal way. This pastor is blessed, and you can tell that he's gone through a lot of therapy and growth <clears throat> based on his transparency. Of course, he didn't specify exactly what happened to him as a kid, but for him to be as transparent and truthful as he is doing on this stage, and I don't know him, this is my first time ever hearing about countercultural church and this pastor, but it's the testimony to God's goodness, God's glory, and to God's blessing over his life. So you may be going through something right now. Someone may be taking advantage of you. I want you to know that you're strong, your strength is in the Lord. And tell someone, because your life is not over. And I still you know, deal with the, the trauma and the ramifications of that on a daily basis. And it's actually probably affected you know, certain things I've said in certain sermons about how I understand the idea of being a victim, how I understand the concept of justice in a unique way. But I was saying, my dad believed the gospel, held me in his arms, told me God was going to make my story into a Joseph story, that God was going to save people through my suffering, and, and, and that God had a purpose and a plan, and he told me I was like a superhero. Well, when I was little, 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 just a year or two after that, I was obsessed with Batman. Absolutely obsessed with Batman, okay? But here's the deal. As I got older, I wanted to be like Batman getting revenge. Bruce Wayne wanted revenge for his... My best friend, my only purpose in life was to find the man... I told him that was my only purpose in life. But here's the thing. When you allow bitterness to fester in your heart, it twists you, and you don't become like Batman. You become like Arthur Fleck. You become like the Joker. It twists you, and it sours you, and, 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 and you start to feel entitled to things with people, and you, start, you go into other relationships, and, and, it, and it, it taints those relationships, and that person who stole something from your past starts to steal something from your present and from your future, and it, and it brings this, this, this uh, horrible anger and this fury and this fuming rage like Jonah, and it, and it sours all of your relationships. Okay? But as I began to understand the gospel, and as I began to, to understand Jesus, he began to heal me of that. And he began to bring forgiveness into my life and bring joy and peace into my life. And here's what I think is really significant. My dad told me I was like a superhero. The day before his funeral, I got to share the gospel with the joker. And then at his funeral... I stood on stage with thousands of people watching and I said the name of my abuser and I said, I forgive you. Now, that doesn't mean that, 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 there, that there's no justice. It's just here's the thing, is that forgiveness allows you to seek justice without it spiraling out of control into vengeance. Forgiveness sets you free to, to, to really have a heart that wants forgiveness, not just one that goes crazy and wants the whole city to burn like the joker. And that's what God's grace, that's what the gospel did in my life. And, uh, and I think it was pretty profound that God allowed that to happen the day before my dad's funeral. This is profound. Forgiveness allows you to heal. Forgiveness is a process. Forgiveness allows you, the forgiver, to experience the peace that passes all understanding. It allows you to no longer 
seek vengeance from the people who took advantage of you. It allows you to open your hands and then God searches your heart and he gives you room through his, through his supernatural strength. He gives you room to, to forgive the person who took advantage of you. It's for you. It's to allow you to continuously live out the purpose and the plan that God has for your life such as this pastor is doing at Counterculture Church. It gives you the opportunity to have these divine, <clears throat> these divine meetings and appointments with individuals like Joaquin Phoenix to share your story and the grace of God with someone else who may be struggling with forgiveness and acting out, reacting in a vengeful way. So let me know what you guys think of this. This is profound, and I wanted to share this with you because we all can grow in the area of forgiveness and being less vengeful and allowing our Father in heaven to fight those battles for us. Thank you again. Take care.